Okay, let's change to red. All right. New lighting. <laughs> Hello, everybody. E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. We have another Top 5 Friday. I figured I'd bring it back just for this month and this month only. Today, just like the other weeks, I am not numbering these. These are in no discernible order, but these are five movies I feel like you should watch this weekend and on Halloween. I may have talked about them before. Um, I may talk about one that you might not know. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to go straight off the top of my head. I don't even have a list, um, but I'm going to try and keep tally, uh, you know, that I just keep it to five. Top five Friday. We, we do alliterative nonsense around here. It's okay. It's okay. Anyways, so the first one I want to talk about is The Houses That October Built. This one is on Tubi. You can watch it for free. And my phone is going off. I apologize. Hopefully it's not going to keep on going off because I don't want to stop to, uh, to turn it off. But anyways, so... Um, this one is about uh, scare performers, and there's going to be another one on this list that I want to talk about. It's the same thing. This one is very dark. It's found footage film, um, so if you don't like that, probably don't watch it. Um, I loved how it ended. Um, I really appreciated I appreciate a good dark ending, and this one left it wide open for a sequel, and they ended up making the second one, which is The Houses That October Built Part 2. Um, but yeah, if, if you're a fan of haunts, um, of scare actors, uh, that kind of thing, going to haunted houses during spooky season, I definitely suggest checking out this one. I have not seen the sequel yet, um, and I, I was hoping to get a review up this month, but I ran out of time. Um, but I will be watching part two on Halloween with my family. Uh, the next one up is the second uh, haunt movie that uh, I, I highly suggest you watch this Halloween season, and it's called Haunt. Uh, the coolest part about this one is about a group of people who go out to a to a secluded haunt to have an extreme horror experience. Um, of course, it devolves into uh, the the kind of uh, it, it, it's a horror movie, so it, it devolves into the scare actors actually you know killing and assaulting the people in there. It has some of the coolest makeup effects on the the when they I don't want to spoil it for you, but when they take off their masks. That's the amazing makeup effects that I'm talking about. Also, pretty real kills throughout, uh, pretty realistic kills throughout. I enjoyed, it was very brutal, um, very upsetting in certain scenes. So if you're looking for something, a true horror experience, um, then I definitely say check that one out. Um, the last three are going to be probably, you guys have seen them, um, but in case somebody comes across these, uh, th this, and they have not seen them, I just want to throw these out there. Of course, the, the Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, perfect Halloween, it's about Halloween Town and Christmas Land. Both these places exist, and there's other mythical lands um, that are uh, themed with, like, uh, the Easter Bunny. They're, they're not in the movie, it's only Christmas Land and uh, the Halloween Land. But uh, I, I thought that was a cool concept, kind of opened it up for future movies if they wanted to do it. I kind of hope they don't just because this one's so perfect. But it does kind of open it up, you know, Valentine's Day land, that, that kind of thing. Uh, Turkey, of course, is Thanksgiving, so on and so forth. Um, but it's a it's a claymation movie directed by Henry Selleck. I will die on this hill every time someone says that it is a Tim Burton movie. Tim Burton did the art design. And that's about it. I think he helped with the story, but Henry Selleck is the one who directed this. And it's the same with Corpse Bride, the same with uh, Wendell and Wilde that's coming out, the new Jordan Peele movie. But it's Jordan Peele produced. Henry Selleck is the one that's directing these claymation movies. Anyways, um, so if you have not seen it, unscrew that right now and go out and check out this movie. Um, it's good for all ages. It might be a little spooky for kids too young, um, but I, I watched it when I was eight or nine, something like that. I can't remember the first time I watched it. I might have been even older, um, but it, it's a fantastic movie. Definitely check that out. Um, next up, we have Trick or Treat. Um, spelled just like that. It's the Doherty directed one, um, and it is an anthology film with a framing mechanic. So there's one big framing story and then there's like four anthologies in, in the middle. It all ties together in this one town on Halloween night and it has an absolutely, icon absolutely iconic uh, villain, I guess it was, in uh, Sam. You know, Sa Sawain, 
people as Samhain if you, if you know you pronounce it wrong. I think even Samhain isn't the proper pronunciation, but it's the best I can do because my lips don't work right. Anyway, so yeah, you got I got a coffee mug up here. Another huge fan of this movie. Um, the uh, the the lollipop weapon. Chef's kiss. That's a, that's all I can say. Anyway, it's got Brian Cox in it. It's got uh, oh, is it Natalie Portman? I think it's Natalie Portman. It's got an uh, it's got a great cast, fantastic accent, acting, fantastic scenes, and it's not just all about like zombies and that kind of thing. You have uh, serial killers. You do have werewolves. You have you know various different monsters, and then Sam himself. Once I always do it. Sam himself is a monster, and it's fantastic. Highly recommended. But where I want to leave off with this is one that I don't think a whole lot of people have seen. If I'm wrong, tell me so down there in the doobly-doo, but it's Tales of Halloween. There's, like, I don't know how many. There's over a dozen, I think, short films in this one movie. Um, but it's got... The, my favorite one is the one with Elliot Gould, I believe is his name, where the two neighbors are fighting over who's who, who can have the most epic uh, Halloween decorations. That one's my favorite in the entire thing, but the whole movie, I think, is fun. Um, in fact, I think most people think that the uh, one with Elliot Gould is one of the worst ones. I had a lot of fun. If you're a Stephen King fan, it reminded me of Drunken Fireworks, but instead of who can have a bitter, bigger 4th of July celebration, it's who can have a bigger uh, Halloween celebration. I thought it was epic. There's even some gore and brutality toward the end that was amazing, in my in my opinion. But it's a fantastic, fantastic short uh, it's not short, but it's uh, it's kind of like the ABCs of death. Some are a little bit longer, but most of them are, I don't know, probably about 10, 10 to 15 minutes long, maybe shorter than that. Um, but even the short ones are good. I like the entire movie. But those are five films I think you need to watch this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and then on Halloween. Watch these movies. Come back to this video. Tell me what you thought of it. But uh, if you have watched these movies... Let me know what you thought about them down there in the doobly-doo. That's the comment section for those of you that don't know because there's a lot of newbies out there to the channel. The doobly-doo is both the description, anything under the video, the description or the uh, or the comments. Uh, let me know what you thought of any of these movies or all of these movies if you want to. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.